So I put out a poll on the Spreadsheet Life channel and the majority of votes determined that a simple budget is the next template everyone wants to learn how to build. So in this video, I will be showing you how to create a simple monthly budget that you see right here in front of you. This Excel workbook is really cool because each month you can enter your monthly income amount here and then you can go about creating your budget in the table below. And as you add categories and start setting a budget for each one, you will be able to see the total amount you've budgeted here and you can also see how much you have left to budget. Now what really adds some pop to this template is that you can log your spending right here in this column. And as you do, you can see how much you've got left and the graph to the right also updates automatically to give you a clear visual as well. Plus, on top of just having this wonderful budget tool in your back pocket, this template is a lot of fun to build and it will really sharpen your spreadsheet skills a little bit too. And with that, let's get into building this workbook all the way from scratch. Now, as I do with all of these build tutorials, I will be starting with a brand new Excel workbook. So the first thing we should do is adjust the row height to give a little more space to all of these cells. To do this, we start by selecting all of the cells in our workbook, and then we can right click on one of the row headings and change the height to 25. Awesome. Next, I say we adjust the column widths to finalize the layout for our worksheet. We can start by selecting all of the cells again, and then we can right click, select column width, and then change the size to 20, and then click on OK. Now there are a few more small adjustments that we need to make to a few specific columns, but to save you from watching me go through and adjust every column that needs to be refined, I'm just going to show you on the screen what width the columns need to be. You can pause the video at this point and take as much time as you need to adjust the columns accordingly. Okie dokie, hopefully that went smoothly. The next thing we need to do is change the font size and alignment for all of the cells in the worksheet. Let's select all the cells again by clicking here. And now we can up the font size to 12 and we can also change the vertical and horizontal alignments to center. Excellent. Next. Let's build our budget table. We'll start by writing categories in all caps in cell B9. We will then type budget into cell C9, spending in cell D9, and remaining in cell E9. Next, let's select these cells and use Control B to bold them. And then we will use the fill button in the ribbon to give them a light gray fill color. Okie dokie. Next, go ahead and copy these cells using Control C and then select B19 and use Control V to paste them here. We will then press the delete button to get rid of the contents. Next, we will select cells B9 through E19 and then we will click on the down arrow next to the border button and select more borders. This opens up the format cells dialog box under the border tab. Let's select a slightly darker gray for the color. And then we will use the outline and inside buttons to apply the border all around all of the cells. We can then click on OK to finish the job. While we are adding borders, let's go ahead and select B5 through C7. And then let's click on the borders button to open up the dialog box once again. And let's repeat the same process as before to apply that slightly darker gray border to these cells. Awesome! At this point, we can go ahead and enter in our categories. And while we're at it, we can go ahead and add in some numbers as well, which we can always change later if we want to. Right now, having the numbers is just a good idea to help us write out our formulas here in a little bit. And with our sample data entered, let's go ahead and select B9 through B19 and change the horizontal alignment to left. Next, let's select C10 through E19, right click and select Format Cells. We will click on the Number tab and then we will select Number under Category. Let's then check this box to use the thousand separator and then we can click on OK. Moving on, Let's create a formula for our remaining column. Starting in cell E10, we will write the formula equals C10 
minus d10. After that, we can simply use the fill handle to drag the formula down through e18. Sweet. Now we can start to focus on the total row. Starting in cell b19, go ahead and type in TOTAL in all caps. Moving over to C19, we can write the formula equals sum open parentheses C10 through C810 close parentheses. This will give us our budget total. Next, we can just use the fill handle to drag the formula to D19 and E19. Now it's time to add in some pops of color to our budget table. Let's begin by selecting D10 through D19, and then we can use this button in the ribbon to apply this dark red color to our spending numbers. Next, we will select E10 through E19, and this time we will use the button in the ribbon and select more colors this time. A custom green color sounds fun here, so we can click on the custom tab, and then where it says hex, we can enter in a hex code of hashtag 206252. Now in case this is completely foreign to you, hex codes are simply hexadecimal representations of colors that computers can understand. We are using this color in particular because after extensive user testing, well, it, it's one of my favorites. And I suppose that's reason enough. Anyway, with the hex code entered, we can click on OK to apply the color to our cells. Now to finish up the budget table, let's select B9 through E9, right click and select Format Cells. We're going to click on the border tab this time, and then we're going to pick this blue gray color you see right here, and then we will select the slightly thicker style of border, and we will apply it on the bottom of these cells and then click on OK. Let's do that one more time by selecting B19 through E19, right clicking and selecting Format Cells. We will pick that same blue-gray color from last time, select the slightly thicker border, and this time we will apply it to the top of the cells, and then we will click on OK. And with that, our budget table looks fantastic. Next, let's focus on the summary metrics right above the table. We'll start by selecting B5 through B7, and then we will add in a light gray fill color. We will also do the same thing to cells C6 and C7. Then, in B5, we will type in monthly income. In B6, we will type in monthly budget. And in B7, we will type in difference. We can then select B5 through B7 and use Control B to bold these cells. Next, in C5, let's go ahead and enter in a value of 3,500. Again, this is just a sample value that we can always go back and change later to the actual budget. For now, this will do. Let's then select C5 through C7, right click, and format cells. Then, under the number tab, we will select number and check that 1000th checkbox, and then click on OK. Now we can write our last two formulas for the worksheet. We will start in C6, and we will type in the formula equals C19. This will set the value to C19, which is already doing the hard work of adding up all of our budget items. Moving down to C7, we will add in the formula equals C5 minus C6. This number will tell us how much money from our income has still yet to be budgeted. We will finish our budget metrics by selecting C6, and then using the ribbon we will change the font color to blue. Then we can select C7, and again use the ribbon to change the font color to that nice green color we customized earlier which is now listed under Recent Colors. And with that, it's time to move on to building our graph. To create our budget remaining graph, start by selecting B10 through B18. Next, we will hold the control key and then also select E10 through E18. With both of these ranges selected, in the ribbon we will go to insert, click on the bar chart button, and select 2D bar. Now to make it easier to align our chart with everything else, go ahead and select the chart and then under format in the ribbon, click on align and then select snap to grid. This will make it much easier to align our chart with the grid lines. 
Now we can resize the chart so that it covers G5 through L19. Next, let's change the chart title by triple clicking on it, and then we'll change it to Budget Remaining. We can then select the title, and then under the Home tab in the ribbon, let's change the size to 16 and also bold it. Then let's click on the vertical axis labels and change the font size of these to 14. And finally, let's select the horizontal axis and then press the delete key on our keyboard. Okay, we are almost there. Let's now click on the plus icon right next to the chart and uncheck the box that says grid lines. And we will also check the box that says data labels. Now we can select the data labels and use the ribbon to adjust the size to 12. Now to prevent our labels from crowding into the bars in certain circumstances, click in the space right below the first bar to select the inner chart area. What we are going to do is drag this to the left until it snaps into place. Again, this will help keep the labels from running into the bars or into the edge of the chart. And with that, let's select the entire chart again by clicking on it, and then under the format tab in the ribbon, change the shape fill to this light gray, and then we will change shape outline to this ever so slightly darker gray. And for the finishing touch on the chart, we'll right click on one of the bars and select Format Data Series. This will open up a panel on the right side of the workbook. We will then click on the small bars icon you see right here, and make sure that the series overlap is set to 0%, and also change the gap width to 125%. These are, of course, just aesthetic changes and not mandatory. They do, however, make the chart look very nice. Finally, we'll click on the paint bucket icon right here, and under Fill, we will select Solid Fill. And then under Color, select More Colors, and this will open up the Colors dialog box one more time. This time, under the Custom tab, we're going to enter in a hex value of hashtag 31937A. This is a slightly lighter green compared to the green that we used earlier. And with that, we can click on OK to apply the color. We can close out this side panel now. And for the final flourish, let's select the range B2 through L3. And then let's merge and center these cells. We can then type in My Monthly Budget. And let's also adjust the font size to 24 and bold it as well. We will then add in the same light gray fill color that we've been working with. And then we will right click, select Format Cells, click on the Borders tab, select this gray color right here, apply it around the outside, and click on OK. And for your very last action, which may surprise you of how much of a difference it makes, go to View and uncheck the box next to Grid Lines. And alas, you have yourself a fully functional and beautifully designed simple monthly budget. You can now adjust the budget and spending numbers to reflect your real life situation. And also, the graph updates automatically. And if you ever need to add in more categories, all you have to do is select a cell within your table and then use the shortcut Alt-I-R. And when you press these keys in succession, you will add a new row to the table and all of your formulas will update to include that row, and even the graph updates to accommodate the new row as well. And that is how to build a simple monthly budget in Excel. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, definitely subscribe so you won't miss any content like this. I also left a link in the description where you can find and download this template for free as well. All that being said, thank you for watching, and until next time, I will catch you in the next Spreadsheet Life video.